Serious computer scientists have read what is the most unsettling slash malicious piece of code that you've written or stumbled upon. Unsettling we have no idea what this block does, but removing it breaks the app, so please don't touch it. Famously in the Windows source code. I think you mean you're not expected to understand this and Unix are fake. These are all the funniest Windows source code comments. I highly recommend checking out the source code of Star Wars GD Academy video game. It's the most hilarious source code I ever saw. Quake 3 introduced the fast inverse square root function which is still my favorite piece of code ever written. That second one is great. Some relatable stuff in there. Dumb hack for back compat. Sigh. Replacing a semicolon with a Greek question mark here in code. Oh, that reminds me. Someone simulated generic types in Golan code by finding Unicode characters that look like angle brackets from Canadian Aboriginals, apparently. Define true line underscore underscore percent 1000. Joke explanation This makes the word true act as false only when the line number in your source code is a multiple of 1000. One thank you for explaining the joke and to calm down Satan. Better not just that, but also putting in full width semicolon Z, so that the initial pass of find and replace all doesn't catch everything. Nothing happened. In 1988, I was paid to write the following lines of code. If year 1900, year equals 1900, the above lines were my contribution to the Y2K bug. And then in 1996, I was paid to fix those lines of code. You're welcome. I'd like to personally thank you for stopping the end of the world with those three lines. I'd like to personally thank him for putting us in danger then saving the day. You too, are welcome, citizen. I once worked on an app for a company that sells guns. Our team put in an easter egg that would switch all the guns to nerf guns. I've never seen anything truly malicious. You'd lose your job immediately, and it isn't easy to sneak code into production on the teams I've been on. Back in the early 90s the local computer shop put a bit of code in the startup of several computers they sold. When the machines were booted up on April 1st the screen presented warning. Your computer is overheating. Pour water in to cool it down. And yes they had to to replace a few. Never assume people will understand you're joking. A T83 calculator. Somebody I didn't like asked me to write them a program that will help them with our upcoming app calc test. I was working on one already, and testing and debugging mine. So I took his calculator home with me over the weekend explaining that it would take time to copy my code over to his calculator. The entire program was just 10 print I don't like you 20 go to 10. When he ran it the calculator was locked in a never ending cascade of I don't like you until he took the batteries out. Why didn't he just press the on button? Error break 1 and 2 go to. That's when you create a list of 999 elements and sort it. Takes several minutes to complete, and the on button won't work until it is finished. Most victims would pull a battery. I'm novice programmer at best. One of the programs we use at work was built by a contractor that hard-coded dates into their code instead using a formula from the current date. As soon as we need to use dates past 2022 the program will error out. The date codes need to be replaced fixed in at least dozen places which may be more work than we will want to do. I don't know not my department. Not sure what we will do if this issue pops up before a fix is produced. Most dates we use are a year out some dates are two years out. This means the program will be mostly dead in less than two years. Of course I could be wrong. As I said I'm only a novice programmer and they are the professionals. Fun fact. The reason Windows skipped from 8 to 10 is because the name Windows 9 caused a lot of old programs to break. Why did those programs break, you ask? Because they did this. If OS point version point starts with Windows 9 code specific to Windows 95 and 98 else code specific to Windows 2000 and you are don't hard code, people. Once during sixth form, being immature and surrounded by idiots I decided to write a program that spam launches explorer. It was just a little throwback to the high school days, where people would spam the explorer button on the keyboards our school had during it lessons. Needless to say the first person who fell for it spread it round our year group, caused a lot of computer crashes, and I narrowly avoided getting in trouble, because the exact version that got sent around was not of my creation. 
and here I was thinking I was hilarious for making a quick bat file named feed me that would pop out the CD drive and make a pop up that said place ham in my mouth. And when you clicked OK it would close the drive. Mine was a bat disguised as a second explorer icon. It would pop open the CD tray randomly every 30 to 120 seconds. My version would press a random key every 3 to 8 minutes. Joke was on me, because it found its way onto the school's system image, so I had to just live with it, until they reverted back to an older archive. I wrote a piece of code that would create, and save a new blank, txt file, and repeat indefinitely. I never did run it. You just reminded me that in the late 90s I wrote something to create a new 10 MB file, and save it somewhere in network storage on every client boot. I didn't like my HS computer teachers at people much. I did that once too, and executed it on a corrupted USB flash drive there was some bad sector on it, that the Windows tool couldn't fix. Believe it or not, that fixed the drive, and it ran perfectly fine for a few months after. It's a fine line between malicious and incompetent, and it's hard to tell the difference at times. Sufficiently advanced stupidity is indistinguishable from malice. Hanlon Clark but people never think him malicious, so it can't be that hard to tell. Create a new, bat file with the content backquote shut down t300 backquote and put it into the auto start folder. It will shut down the computer after 5 minutes automatically. Not really malicious, but it will break inexperienced users. We do that to all our new techs week 1. Good way to see if they know their stuff. How would you know to look for, bat file running, wouldn't you see a command prompt screen pop up for like a microsecond upon boot up, and be suspicious based off that. It's pretty standard to check for running programs and to inspect the various startup locations when troubleshooting. Finding a random batch in startup should be something to check for. Sounds like a low level version of that worm in Windows XP's early days. I worked for a company that had a program that automatically attempted to charge previously declined CR cards on auto renewal over the customer's limit. I wrote a program to automatically play an online game. I justify it because the game is pay to win. Back in the MS-DOS days, I would sometimes go to a display unit which was sitting at a DOS prompt and type prompt general failure reading drive C$ sign underscore abort, retrieve, fail. Echo backquote sleep one backquote, bash re can't remember if that's the exact syntax, but it added a sleep of one second to the end of the user's bash rec file startup script. Each time they opened a terminal it slept for a second longer than the last time. At Purdy University punch card era, I saw a ref f in an infinite loop. Paper actually touched the ceiling. Unsettling, I remember finding a bit of code in Adder that called a C function to bypass privacy and modify the internals of the object directly. It was a hack to change something in the processing flow. Instead of weaving the new functionality in, he waited until the processing was done and shoved the desired results in. I was tasked with a total rewrite where the outputs had to match with the legacy code. Because the hack was post-processing I couldn't make it bit perfect, unless I emulated the hack. My PM made me do it. At my first job in it, through a series of pranks, I got the root password from one of the admins. I created a sued root shell in my home directory, whose name I set to CTRLE. I would use it to torture my co-workers. Killing processes, their terminal sessions, slightly renaming files, putting big sleep commands in their profiles. The check for a valid login had an else statement not an if else. For a successful login. When I was in college, I had a friend who wrote and accidentally launched a fork bomb on the college owned servers, which are used for academic projects for professors and students. She posted on a class forum later, saying I think I may have made a mistake. The servers were all rebooted. Ah, what a great intro to computer systems. If bool equals equals true, else, do something. Pretty much anything written by my brother is incomprehensible spaghetti code. So when he asks me for help, I have to spend 15 minutes formatting before I can I can read it. I knew a guy in college who wrote code like that. Single letter variable names, huge functions full of dead code, multiple old versions of any given block of code commented out. Once I was done fixing his nonsense, it was no wonder he couldn't figure out what he was doing. 
the guy wanted to design hardware and didn't care much for writing software. He liked to do this kind of thing out of spite and sometimes that worked out for him, but he was too stubborn to go and fix it when it came back to bite him. I told him he wouldn't hate it so much if he stopped making it so hard on himself. I write all of my prototype code like that, no useful comments, old versions of functions just blocked out, output in the middle of the script somewhere. My defense is that it's MATLAB and I'm programming myself. I'll usually clean it up when I'm done though usually. If you have an outdated and secure WordPress website, any mysterious file with a PHP extension that contains the evil function. In the early 2000s, when AIM was still a thing, I put a link in my profile that said do not click on this link. If you clicked on it, it would open a browser window to something I don't remember what. The thing is, if you close that window, it would open two more windows, and so on. I once added echo sleep one bashrik to someone's bashrik. Not exactly code, but one of the nastiest I left my computer unlocked pranks I ever heard of was from the WinXP days. Essentially, you would modify the boot config to run on the minimum memory required 64 megabytes. It wouldn't fire until the next time they rebooted, and then they would have the slowest system on the planet. Someone put the following line in a header file in the CC++ project I'm working, to find sprintf, uh, sprintf sizi alpha. Uh, that may not be the exact syntax, but the gist of it was to replace every call to sprintf with a call to sprintf and limit any writes to that string to the size of the string. Fine for char, but if you use char the size is 4 on a 32-bit system. I wrote a basic program that overloads your computer by opening every application and tab it can, while Rick Astley plays in the background at full volume it was hilarious until someone used it on a school computer. It's not a virus or malware that will break your computer, but it runs a script that repeats itself so fast it just crashes your computer. So it does in fact break the computer? The most unsettling one for me was Mr. Point Smile Point Eggs. I'd set up repeating cron jobs on co-workers computers with eject T. They made motherboards where. Well never mind. I think the vulnerability is still there. This happened today. I'm a CS student on my fourth year at college. A buddy and freshman asked me for help for his introduction to programming class assignment he has to do and quote an algorithm that takes the age of three people and calculate a discount of a flight ticket based on it or stuff. 480 lines of code in CI decided to instead make it all from scratch 20 lines. Malicious? Not exactly, but when I was in school, I was taking a C assembly class where we had to remote into a Linux server to do all of our work. All of a sudden, we get a message in the middle of class saying someone set off a fork bomb a simple process that makes two of itself, so it just keeps making more and more processes and using up resources in the server needed to be rebooted. I just remember our professor saying, okay class is over, we are now watching it try and figure this one out, so he pulls up the task list to try and see who set it off and watch as it tried to stop it without having to reboot and cause people to lose work. I wrote a backdoor into my Minecraft mod. I'm just a CS student at the moment, so I don't have much experience. I once wrote a program to download a bunch of nudes. Can't true equals false. Can't false equals true. Function is equal a b return a equals equals b function or a b return a and an b function and a b return a vertical bar vertical bar b function divider b return evola plus plus b function muller b return evola plus b function func arg n return new function n arg const in at underscore equals true while in at underscore equals 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 false mul console point log initializing eight seven in at underscore equals false and so it kept going I created a small program, put it on a key, and whenever I plugged it in any Windows computer, after a few seconds, it would really quickly disable the firewall if possible, put the volume to 100, and hold it at that level, change the wallpaper to this, and launch an e-rape USSR anthem, with the volume, set to 100. Oh, and of course, it constantly spammed Windows plus L to instantly lock the computer, and to lock it even if you relog. The worst thing I accidentally did, add one year to a date, works fine and will pass pretty much all tests. 
What happens is this created a bug every 4 years. On February 29th, this can mess several things up. Growing up I followed a tutorial that walked you through writing a bad file that when opened, would shut down your computer, and on startup would shut it down again. Was a pretty easy fix, but just an endless loop of your computer shutting down. Sent it to a friend and his mom got mad, and called my mom. A script that repeatedly ejects any disk drive. When executed it automatically assigns itself to run on startup. Database coding is always fun, when you do this. With just a few lines of code, it is extremely easy to write a devastating logic bomb that can fill up a computer's memory, paging file, C drive, etc in a matter of seconds. Just find the nearest largest file and start duplicating it to the same partition drive. Copies to the same write space happen very very quickly. And then just find a bunch of random vulnerable system processes and duplicate those. Oh, and also set up a copy of my code to run on startup by putting myself in the default startup folder. No permissions necessary for any of this, and it can be written in as many as 10 to 20 lines of code. When I was in 8th grade, I wrote a batch script on a Windows computer that was over 10 years old. It was incredibly simple, all it did was launch CMD. The thing is, I copied the line that launched CMD more than a hundred thousand times, so when I ran it, it crashed the computer, and not even pushing the power button did anything. I had to unplug it. This type of program can crash even modern computers when you copy plus paste it enough. Or you know, save yourself some time and google fork bomb. Ransomware. It wasn't me, but a friend of mine. A guy offered him 15,000 to create a ransomware that would be good enough to breach even the toughest of security. His creation ruined some people's lives. I wrote an interactive story, and it turned out horrible. The code, the writing, just everything. Stuxnet is my favorite example. NSA built a virus that would spread like wildfire, but only affect one type of system, SCADA which the NSA knew, was used by the Iranians in their nuclear programs, and would give them false readings. Heard from a Kaorka, that an ex Kaorka created a yes no enum. In the end the yes would translate to a true expression and the no would be a false expression. Apparently he was baffled, that he could use a boolean instead of that enum as well.